Hi, welcome back to Chapter 2, Lesson 2, Visual Representation of Set Analysis. In previous lesson, we have seen what is set analysis and why use set analysis. In this lesson, we'll learn different components of set analysis without worrying about the actual syntax itself. So at a high level, I wanted to show you what makes the set analysis syntax. I'm sure you must remember the Venn diagrams. So let me show you the visual representation of set analysis components and syntax. So the first component, if you remember, is the set identifier, right? So set identifier is basically like your dollar sign, which is the current selection. So if you're writing set expression, it's an optional syntax. So wherein you don't have to mention dollar sign. If you don't mention, ClickView treats the dollar sign implicitly. So it's an optional parameter, but it is good for you to know. And it's always best practice to be more explicit when you're writing code. I much prefer that way. So whoever is reading the code will be able to follow easily. And one implies full set, right? Dollar sign is the current selections and then one implies full set. And then we have dollar one which is your previous selection. So if you think about it as, as a user or when a user making selections, uh, when they've opened the app and making selections, all the selections are actually tracked, right? And they are stored within that instance of the app and the session of the app. So basically when the user clicks on the, basically let's say that user selects year equals to 1998, and then he changes the selection to 1999 or 2016. In that case, your current selection is 2016 and your previous selection, which is represented as dollar one is 1998. So, and then this is an interesting one. This is like forward selection or the next selection. So what it means is basically you don't know what the selection is, but whatever the selection user is going to make, you're going to take that set. So you don't have to know what it is, but you know basically the set element of it. Dollar underscore one is primarily used for some kind of what if analysis kind of scenarios. But at the moment, let's just understand that dollar underscore one is the next selection, okay? Where opposite is the dollar one is the previous selection. And then you have bookmark, right? So if you really think about your set identifiers, basically bookmark is also a set. It will contain a selection state. When something contains a selection state, it is considered as a set, okay? So which is why bookmark is also a set. And then if you see on the right-hand side, we will be looking at the set modifiers. So these are your identifiers, the modifiers in blue. Basically, if you think about the modifier, modifier is like the where clause in SQL. We'll, we'll understand more. There's a whole chapter about set modifier, but at a high level, set modifier is the where clause, right? So you can say year equals to 2016 or country equals to something. It doesn't have to be one value. It can be multiple values. More examples here. So we have region as US. And if you see, we have single quotes here. So anything which is string, you need to have it in single quotes, right? Numbers don't need single single quotes because they are in numerical form. And then if you see the intersection between the set identifier and then the set modifier, here you'll see an example, right? So the example is if you see sum, which is an aggregation function, and then city, let me just ignore the red part, right? Let me focus on the blue part first. So if you see here, this is, set modifier, if you see the angular brackets, whatever you have in angular brackets, that's modifying the set. And what is your set right now? One, one is your full set. You're taking full data set, and then you're modifying from the full set, you wanted to restrict, take everything, and you wanted to restrict city equals to London. And so in this case, if you see, this is your set modifiers. I thought I'll highlight them in relevant color, so it's quite intuitive for you to follow this. So if you see, if you focus on the modifier, always think about the angular brackets. You can have multiple modifiers. If you wanted, you can have like next one as comma, 
year equals to 2016. One angular bracket is enough. You don't need angular bracket for each of the modifier. So if you have an angular bracket and have all your modifiers listed by using comma separation, and then you can close the angular bracket. Uh, we've already seen the set identifier highlighted in red, right? Which is why I marked it in red color here. It has the, the flower brackets. So you have the flower brackets here and it's saying that it's full set and the flower bracket is actually closing here because that's your full set and within that set you have a modifier. We are taking full set and then we are restricting the data and we are removing city equals to London and we are aggregating the data by using the sum function. We are aggregating it on sales. Sales is my field name in the data model. Moving on, if you look at the set operators, so now that we have seen set identifiers and set modifiers, so the third component is set operator, right? Set operators are very close to your algebra operators. So plus sign doesn't mean addition here. They're more like your set operator. So plus sign here means union. And then the next one is the minus sign. And then we have intersection and then symmetric difference. Again, there are multiple lessons which are dedicated to set operators. So we'll look, look at all of that stuff. Okay. So, and then if I show you the intersection between an identifier and then the set operator here. So looking at this expression, what are we saying here? So we're saying that we are taking the full set and then from the full set, the minus sign represents exclusion and we are taking away the current selection. So we don't have to know what is the current selection. So whatever is the current selection, we will take it away from full set. So let's say that in your data set, just to simplify things, you have three years in your data set, which is 2014, 2015, and 2016. So that's your full set. When you create an expression like this, where one minus dollar, what is going to happen is whatever user is going to select, it will exclude that value and aggregate everything else. So in our case, so if the user selects 2016, so he will not see 2016. It is almost like inverse of your current selection. So current selection is just the current selection. In here, what are we saying is, get me everything apart from current selection. So it's a simple syntax. And then we are using set identifier, which is one and then the dollar and that we are using the set operator as the minus sign. And again, you, you know this stuff. So we, we are aggregating using the sum function and sales is my field name, right? So if you break down the set analysis syntax, it'll become much simpler, right? I thought I'll show you a high level overview of what makes set analysis. So you understand it from 30,000 feet and then we'll deep dive into various identifiers, modifiers, and operators in further lessons. And we'll make sure that we, you will get loads of practice by solving different challenges. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching.